Why 100 Million Women Can't Find a Man Who Wants Them in China China is dealing with a big gender imbalance, which means there are way more women than men. This creates a major challenge for millions of women who struggle to find partners. Let's dive into this issue. In China, there's a cultural expectation for women to get married young. A woman over 27 who's still single is often seen as too old for marriage. This stigma not only affects social perception, but also puts intense pressure on women and their families to find a partner quickly. This cultural phenomenon leads many parents to push their daughters to marry early, even arranging dates for them. To illustrate this reality, let's listen to Liang's story, a 35-year-old Chinese man interviewed by China Observer. Liang talks about the importance of having material possessions and the need to rent a house in Dengjin as essential requirements for him and his future wife. This mindset reflects the value placed on financial stability and material possessions in Chinese society. If I had to get involved with a girl my age, honestly, I might feel a bit uncomfortable. To me, youth is the most valuable thing a woman has. By the time they reach 27, many of these women have already moved out of their parents' house because they've become adults and independent, just like anyone else around the world. However, if they can't find a partner, the situation gets complicated. They face social isolation because at this age, many don't go back to their parents' or relatives' homes. The shame and embarrassment of sharing their struggles and failures in life keep them from staying in touch or returning to the family home. The routine of these women gets harder and harder. Besides the intense isolation, their lives are basically just going to and from work. Meanwhile, the people around them are married and living their lives as couples. Even if they make an effort to go on dates arranged by specialized companies, these dates rarely work out. Most men value youth in women just like Liang mentioned in his story. Why are so many women in China single, even though there are more men than women? The answer is complicated. A big part of it has to do with Chinese family traditions, where 90% of families follow conservative principles. In this culture, women are mainly seen as the caretakers of the home and the husband, and many don't see an issue with this traditional role. The problems start with arranged marriages, which are still common in China. A lot of parents still set up dates for their kids, especially for young women between 18 and 20 years old. However, many of these women, influenced by modernity and Western culture, want to choose their own partners. Inspired by Hollywood movies and aware of social changes, these young women want the freedom to find their own Prince Charming. It's important to point out that the dates set up by parents aren't forced. The decision to keep seeing the suggested match is totally up to the daughter. You're 30 and still single. What's going through your mind? Are you still thinking about finding other options? You're lucky you haven't been turned down yet. I can't understand someone who acts so impulsively. However, in more than 50% of cases, they choose not to go along with it. They decide to stay single, focus on their studies and careers, and seek independence before considering marriage. Unfortunately, time flies, and before they know it, age catches up, making it harder to find a partner. Besides the challenge of arranged marriages, many women prefer not to marry early because of living with their parents. Many of these young people's parents came from arranged marriages where love and affection didn't develop like in passionate relationships. This led to problematic living situations and unions. The kids, raised in this environment, grew up witnessing the lack of harmony between their parents, making many of them view marriage negatively. This is definitely one of the main reasons why so many women in the country are single. By the time they decide it's time to find their Prince Charming, many are already 27 or older, and then it might be too late. These women end up desperate to find someone who will accept them. But there's a specific group within these statistics that has caused concern for both the government and society in general. I'm talking about women from high society. Unlike women from middle and lower classes, who often look for partners with common qualities, these elite women have high expectations and demand almost perfect men. They value a high social status and a stable, prosperous financial situation. These demands are fueled by their own achievements and lifestyle, where success and sophistication are key. These women aren't willing to settle for less than they believe they deserve, which makes finding a partner even more complicated. They expect to meet men who not only match their status, but also offer security, power, and influence. 
This search for the ideal partner often takes time because finding someone who meets all these criteria isn't easy. And this difficulty is keeping the government and many in society up at night, worried about the growing number of successful women who remain single. What do you think about these demands? Is it too much to ask for a perfect Chinese guy who's six feet tall and making millions a year? Maybe some of these women are really destined to stay single forever. For Chinese women who aren't part of the elite, marrying foreigners becomes a hope. There are bride markets in various squares around the country where many of these women go on weekends to try to find someone. In these places, it's common to see parents, grandparents, and other relatives introducing their daughters and granddaughters to potential suitors, hoping to help them find a suitable partner. If any guy has managed to catch the attention of these women and many others there, you certainly can too. I just want to point out that a man from a different ethnicity was considered attractive and well accepted. So, your chances of being accepted are high too, since being different isn't an issue for many of them. However, don't go to China with your head full of romantic expectations. These women are looking for serious relationships with the intention of getting married. Also, it's essential that you have financial stability and a well-established career. This way, you have a better chance of keeping a stable relationship with your partner. And let's be honest, they're right to ask for it. Two other crucial points to consider are communication and culture. What language will you guys use to talk? I'm Chinese from Changchun, so I can help you with that. Even though Mandarin is a tonal language and very different from ours, you can start by communicating in English. Many Chinese people can speak English, which makes the initial communication easier. Of course, not everyone does, but knowing English is a good start. Over time, you can learn some basic Mandarin to improve your interaction even more. Now talking about the second aspect, it's essential to consider the cultural differences between you and your Chinese partner. This involves important decisions, like choosing between living in China or your home country. Each culture has its own traditions, customs, and expectations that can impact the relationship. You'll need to negotiate and find a balance between these cultural differences, whether it's during holidays, family practices, or even in the roles expected within the relationship. And these are just a few of the many things to consider. Besides, it's important to understand that these cultural differences can also affect everyday matters like food, lifestyle, and even raising children. Adapting to a new culture is a process that requires patience, understanding, and a lot of communication. But now I want to know, did you already know that there are about 100 million single women in China? What do you think about this situation? Leave your opinion in the comments. And if you're curious to learn more about how intercultural relationships can work and want practical tips to make this experience positive, stay tuned for the next video. We'll dive deeper into how to navigate cultural differences and build a solid and harmonious relationship. Until then, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any updates.